Big Show Business. This is a very special segment of activity because it includes four elements, uh, being the music recording, music publishing, music distribution, and of course the constant touring, and the elements of the music show business can be continued. The peculiarity of the music show business in Ukraine is it that it is developing so fast that the legal acts uh, cannot regulate all the aspects, of course, of music show business. That is why these relations can be regulated by the contracts entered into by the parties. And one of such new constructions is the producer contract in the music show business, which is very on demand because it is entered into very often in the sphere of activity. Uh, what is special about the producer contract? Well, if you open the civil code of Ukraine, you will not find producer contract, so it is not defined by the civil legislation of Ukraine. It is a mixed contract. Why it is mixed? Because it can include the elements of the other enumerated contracts, for example, the uh, license agreement, agreement on rendering of services, agency agreement, etc. And the concrete number of these contracts that will be included into the producer contract will depend upon the actual relations between the parties. So each case is individual and the uh, number of the contracts that will be included in the producer contract, they may vary. This is bilateral contract. Why it is bilateral? Because uh, the uh, interests of both parties to the contract matter. It is a backpaid contract. <laughs> Why it is backpaid? Because both of the parties receive some consideration from this contract. And uh, what is special that under this contract, producer is obliged to represent the performer and provide the latter with the wide range of services. These services, of course, may also vary upon the actual relations between the parties. Normally, producer holds all the intellectual property rights for the objects created in the course of uh, uh, conduction of uh, the obligations under the producer agreement. There are some types of producer contracts in the doctrine of civil law. The first one, uh, the first criteria is the expression of will of the parties who enter into the contract. So you can see that it can be either bilateral, where producer and performer is the party to the contract, and it can also be trilateral, where investor is also the party to the contract. Um, then what is interesting is uh, that producer contracts can be civil contracts when both of the parties are equal, and uh, they can be labor contracts when the performer actually works in the production center. He or she obtains salary, uh, conducts the, the labor function, etc., etc. So uh, this is the next division. And uh, also, depending upon the term or the period of producer contract, it can all, all also be distinguished. Uh, it can be either short-term producer contract under one year, then middle-term, one to seven years, and the long-term, over seven years. Why did I choose uh, seven years? Because in some jurisdictions, for example, in California, it is forbidden to conclude producer contracts for more than seven years uh, due to, uh, un um, due to uh, unfair competition clauses. So, uh, the contents of producer agreement uh, here I have used uh, the traditional division in the doctrine of civil law of Ukraine. All the contents of each and every agreement includes essential terms of agreement, in Ukrainian, then ordinary terms, the and accidental terms, the So, essential terms. This is the matter of the contract. What is the matter of the contract? Uh, this is the actions of the obliged parties under the contract. If it is bilateral, then producer is obliged to render services to the performer and performer is obliged to follow the instructions of the producer. The price of the contract, the, the price uh, actually it is a very interesting term of the producer agreement because it may vary in each and every case. For example, if you look into American legal doctrine, then they say that uh, normally um, the production center gives some advance to the performer if it is Madonna, it can be $1 million. If it is newborn performer, it can be $10,000 or $20,000. And this money should be used by the performer to create the album and to conduct the recording. All the rest that is not used, that stays, uh, the, uh, that stays uh, on behalf of performer. 
So um, there is also a very interesting doctrine, the record one doctrine, meaning that um, if uh, the uh, activity of the performer starts to bring some income, then a uh, production center pays royalty over the advance that has been given. And the period of the contract, you know that normally under the civil code of Ukraine, the period is not the essential term. However, in all the world, the period is the essential term of producer contract because it really matters uh, to make, uh, for the producer to make performer, uh, to perform exclusively for this producer for some defined period of time. So I think that the period of the contract should, all, should be distinguished as the, ordinary, uh, the essential term. Why did I put blah 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 here? Because the ordinary terms, uh, they are um, they are presumed even if you do not stipulate them directly in the producer agreement. For example, if some objects of intellectual property are licensed by the performer to the producer, the territory of the contract will be Ukraine if you, even if you do not stipulate it under the civil code of Ukraine. And something new, the accidental terms, these are the terms that are not regulated by the civil legislation, so the parties may choose what it is important for them and include them in the producer contract. This is, of course, exclusivity, confidentiality, creation of certain number of music compositions, what is known is usage of social networks, for example, posting videos in YouTube on behalf of the performer, then blogging on behalf of the performing artist, then uh, this could be a duty of producer to organize and conduct shooting of video clips, concert promotion and touring for performing artists, etc. And uh, the list of accidental terms uh, also is not complete and may vary in each and every case. The most interesting question the parties to producer contract, I think that some of you are wondering who is producer. So, let us look into it. Producer in American legal doctrine, there are three types of producers. The first one is the commentarian. This is the person who technically organizes signing the agreements and technically organizes the process of recording and then the concert touring. Then the servant of the project. This is uh, the producer who takes some who puts some creative input. For example, uh, he arranges the song and the star. Uh, by the way, you can see Timbaland over there. He's recording in the, his studios. He is an example of the star producer who uh, makes great creative input into the final product. Well, in Ukraine, forget about the types of producer. This is the person who mixes everything. And in my opinion, this is the person organizing, organizing and financing and making or being capable to make a creative input into the creation of the object of musical show business. Then performer, you can see Lana Del Rey is an example of performing artist. You can see a definition here from the International Convention on Protection of Performers and Broadcasting Organizations. Mm -hmm. And normally, performer is a vulnerable party to the contract. Why is that? Because uh, producer is economically stronger and he can dictate the terms of the producer contract to the performer. There is a special uh, status of minor performance. You can see Justin Bieber. Uh, in accordance with the international agreements, a minor is every person who has not reached 18 years old. If you look into the international legal acts, they are stating that uh, um, the child performers can work in the entertainment industry unless uh, this intervenes with their right to education and with their right to leisure or free time. Um, there is a very interesting doctrine, infancy law doctrine, in the American legal doctrine, uh, what is this? Uh, if, in case if a minor enters a producer contract, this contract can be void at any time, only on the basis that a minor has not reached 18 years old. Uh, in order to avoid that, there is another um, uh, doctrine of legalization of agreements entered into with minors. This is um, a legalization by the court of such agreements, and the court normally looks that the producer contract should be uh, fair for the minor and that the legal representatives of the minor should give their consent to enter into such contract. And also, what is interesting, um, you know my colleague Kalkin, I think all of you know, mm -hmm. yeah, Home Loan, and
and uh, his parents have spent all the money, if my colleague helped him, all the money he earned. So in America, there are special laws uh, that uh, uh, obliged to put some income of minor into trust, and this money cannot be touched until the minor reaches 18 years old. So the investor, this is the person who brings the money into the project, and normally he bears risk of non-obtaining of the expected income. In order to prove that uh, producer relations are alive in Ukraine, I wanted to show you some court practice. So, this is Mika Newton, she is uh, the representative of Ukraine in the Eurovision Song Contest. So, what happened to her? She had the producer agreement with Yuri Falosan, and uh, until the agreement uh, was enforceable, everything was good. But upon the termination of agreement, Yuri Falosan started to use her pseudonym, Mika Newton, and uh, uh, he even tried to prevent her from using her pseudonym. Uh, in order to prevent this violation, Mika Newton filed a claim to the court uh, in order to recognize her non proprietary rights to the pseudonym. And she has proved that uh, she has used uh, this uh, Mika Newton pseudonym even prior to signing the producer contract. This is why the court, of course, recognized her rights to the Mika Newton pseudonym. And last but not the least is Svetlana Lobodana. I think you all remember her wonderful performance. She also had producer agreement with the production center. And it happened that production center registered a trademark Svetlana Lobodana. And she has also registered the trademark Svetlana Lobodana. And uh, production center has filed a trademark infringement case. And what is interesting for us is a preliminary injunction issued in this case. By this preliminary injunction, the court has forbidden Svetlana Lobada to use the trademark and to perform under her own name. Uh, of course, uh, this preliminary injunction has been appealed and it has been cancelled because under the Civil Code of Ukraine, this is her name and she can use it in every types of her activities. That is why such injunction has been cancelled. Well, I have a lot of more information, I'm limited in time, and if you have any questions, you can ask me now, or send your queries to my email. Thank you very much for your attention.